Welcome to SharePoint Power Hour. I'm Laura Rogers and I've got Joelle Jobson here on audio. Hello everybody. So we're we're keeping it fairly lighthearted today. We've got, you know, a bunch of serious situations going on and just, you know, society collapsing and I, I don't know, you know, what's going to happen, but we're pushing forward with Power Hour and we're going to talk about um Power Apps with Microsoft Teams because you know Microsoft's Teams. There's a big push for Teams, and even be before this whole virus outbreak, Microsoft was pushing Teams really hard um, because, and it's the fastest growing product I think in Microsoft's history. Um, something like that, the, a statistic that I heard. So, and it, Microsoft Teams is going to be perfect for all of you like me who are working from home, and so. There are a lot of cool, interesting integration points with Power Apps and Teams. It's not just one thing. It's multiple ways that you can uh, do Power Apps and Teams integration and Power Automate too. So you all voted when you uh, you got our newsletter and you voted. You voted for the Power Apps with Teams. So that's going to fill up the hour. There's a lot to it. So <laughs> the first thing that I'm going to talk about now. It This is pretty easy. So last time, the last power hour that we had, um, we talked about uh, the commu crisis communication app that Microsoft put out for communicating, you know, during, during this time of crisis. And one of the things that you do with that app is you embed it as a tab in Microsoft Teams. So I demoed that in um as part of that demo let me go uh, go ahead and share my screen here so i'll just go ahead and do a quick recap of of that and let me close that let me go over to i've got so many different tenants running so okay so in Teams, this has been here just, this has been in here for a couple of years. You've had the capability of doing this. Um, but what you can do is you can just use this little plus button and add Power Apps as a tab here. And then when you add Power Apps, it's going to have a button that says that you click to add to actually install it. And then once you install it, then you get to pick from pick an app. So um, I can just look at my apps, all apps, sample apps. So then it lets me search for what app I want to post uh, to put on this tab. And then I've got, now I've got my crisis communication app just as a tab right here in a specific channel in Teams. So that's really easy. You just click the plus to add a tab. You pick Power Apps and you pick your Power App. And, but that is specifically in a team in a channel. Now, there is a way that you can, this is fairly new, that you can publish a Power App to have it available here down the left side as an app or as an app that people can pick from. Like here I did the company store. So I didn't post it in to, to actually be showing in here. Now my resolution is really large when I'm doing Power Hour. So even things that would all normally be showing here, they're kind of wrapping to this um, little extra area here. So like my company store, I posted that as an app here so people could go directly to it this way. So this is what I'm going to show you how to do next. So I, um, I have a, let me go ahead and go to my other environments. I have a power app. Um, called, um, this is one thing I'm going to show you in a, in a little bit, but I have one say called employee directory that I already published. So I'll just show you, I have this customer projects demo and I'll show you what this little process looks like. So as soon as you just click something just here in your web.powerapps.com, you're going to have the ability to add to teams or you can go add to teams here. So when you click add to teams, that gives you the ability. It will tell you if you, your app doesn't have a description. 
So what I can do is um, this app doesn't have a description. I might want it to have a description so that when it shows up in this little Microsoft Teams app store, it will actually say something and describe what the app is so people can decide if they want it. So um, if it doesn't have a description yet, it's gonna actually take you into the Power App and take you to the settings. And that's where you have the ability to change what your little icon looks like and the name of your Power App and the description. So it's taking me straight to that area. Well, it's not taking me straight to the area. It just told me to go to that area. So I go to settings and so here it is. So here's my icon. Here's my description. It says manage customers and projects. Um, and add timesheet items and I can change my icon so then I can um, apply that save now the thing about publishing so once you have uh, published this this is important to understand before just between publish creating the app and publishing it and having it in teams there are a couple of other little pieces so we have this share button and the share button has always been there this is who you want to share it with you still have to share it with everyone in here for them to be able to see it and use it in teams so only who you share it with will be able to have it in microsoft teams so I, uh, I went ahead and shared this with everyone in the tenant. And um, so it is shared with everyone. And also another thing to know is that when you are uh, making updates to it later, when you're making updates to it later, you don't need to keep downloading the app and publishing it to Teams again. So the only reason you would need to re-download it and re-upload it to Teams would be if you change the title or description of your app. All the other changes, you're just gonna change your app and click the publish button as you would normally do, and that those changes will go to the live Power app just in Teams. So this download app and all this is not something you have to keep doing every time you make edits. That makes sense? So I'll go ahead and got my customer projects demo. I download it. It gives me a zip file, just like um, I'm used to getting zip files anytime I export something as well. So now it's got, it's where it's going to take me to learn more. Now this admin settings um, link that it takes you to when you click to learn more, I posted that in the chat. So over in the general channel, in our Slack channel we're chatting on, over in the general channel, I posted a bunch of links. So I posted this link with um, the information about the admin settings, and I posted um, a, a bunch of other links that are references for today. So I've got admin settings for apps, the app permission policies, things that we're talking about, getting top context for your team, and then several different roadmap items of um, important I, what I thought were interesting updates to teams that are rolling out or rolling out soon. Okay, so it now it's telling me that I've got a zip file and I need to go upload that to Teams. So I go over to Teams and I've got, you know, my chat going on. This is my little fake tenant here. And I go to Apps. And then I have upload, see at the very bottom down here, hopefully you can see it in this video. It's probably at the very bottom of YouTube. I have upload a custom app and I have upload for Wonderlara. Now that is going to be where I can upload it for the whole tenant. Now you may or may not see this upload a custom app button and you may or may not see two different options here. So I'll show you what the other option um, is going to look like. I'll go to this other one this other tenant. And you might have two different options here. When you choose the me or my teams, that is the same thing as putting it on a tab inside of a specific team. So uploading it for IW Mentor is like, that's for your whole, whatever your tenant is, and that's where you are gonna be able to put it um, down the left side. Okay, so for this one, I'll do upload for Wonderlara, and that was my customers and projects app. So I've got, I go to my downloads 
and here's my customer's projects demo and that is I just downloaded it and now it's a spinning wheel now it's uploading now um, it's gonna show it as when it ultimately when it finishes uploading it's gonna put it in this built for wonder Laura section here now keep in mind and this is just a general power apps concept that when you are publishing power apps and publishing them out to people and giving them access giving people access to it those people still have to access have access to the underlying data wherever that is so like if it's SharePoint lists then people need to have access to uh, permissions to the SharePoint list behind the scenes so that is underlying that still needs to happen it gave me an error that's fine that's why I went ahead and did some of these ahead of time but I do have one that I uploaded the other day called employee directory and that is one that um, that is one that the entire tenant will now have access to now when people go when just regular end users go to this app section now they'll be able to um, click find an app here and they'll be able to find it this way and they'll be able to add it to their own little list of apps that they like to use and they'll be able to also go to built for wonder Laura in this big list of apps and they'll be able to see it there and um, since I uploaded it I have an update button if I want to update it and um, give it a new like update a new zip if I change the name or description of it so that's the only reason I would need to do an update make sense so far okay so now there's a whole other layer of managing apps and managing all this stuff and who can see what over here so that's when um, that's when I did a little bit of testing before we started power hour and to kind of get my head around you know understanding what all this is so our I don't know how many of you are a teams admin but a lot of this is going to take place in the teams admin center here so I am in I went to office 365 admin and in the admin centers list I went to teams so that takes me to this okay so now inside of teams I want to go expand this little section called teams apps and this is where I'm doing everything in this next section where I'm managing the apps and the policies there are a couple of different kinds of policies so first of all the first thing I see when I click manage apps is just a list of a whole bunch of apps and it'll, you can tell that a lot of these are just third-party apps um, buddy bunky captory and so these are Cisco you might recognize some of these names these are all third-party apps that are just in here automatically but I have the ability to check the box next to any of them and allow or block them so look by default I can look over here and they are all allowed so I can specifically go in here and you know I can check the box and check them all and click block or check the box and click allow and this is like a this is a global setting that I'm doing right here but you don't have to do it right here because it you can create more specific policies for specific groups of people in your org so um, but this is where you can see the one big giant list of apps and allow or block them so then when I go to permissions policies now I created a couple of different ones to kind of show you just some um, some general concepts of what we'll be doing with that there is going to be a global org wide default and that's going to be the policy that you have if you've never touched this you've never done anything in here this is what your policy will be and by default everything will be allowed it will be allow all apps allow all apps allow all, all apps so everything will be allowed globally so anybody in your org just by default is going to be able to go to that little um, button that I showed you and click to upload a custom app and upload apps okay so what I did was I went into my global policy and I went ahead and said okay we can have all Microsoft app that's like power apps power bi planner those are all just the built-in Microsoft apps of you know parts of office 365 we use all the time and then I went ahead and just chose to block all third-party apps as a global policy 
And then I, for tenant apps, I went ahead and chose allow specific apps and block all others. So then these are the tenant apps that I created in Power Apps and I uploaded. So after I've uploaded them, they're gonna show here and I can just click add apps and go search for them. Like if I had, um, this is a different tenant than I just uploaded the customer demo one, but um, that's where you would just have to know the name of your app and allow them. So that's the global permission policy, but then you can get a little more granular. So for HR, I'm gonna say I want HR people to be able to have, they have these specific apps for HR people that I want them to be able to use. Like this one is like for payroll and it's like a, maybe a service that we use at our company. And um, Disco is more like for employee morale, that kind of thing. So I just put these in here just as an example of what you could do for HR only. So I'm still allowing them to have all Microsoft apps. And, but I'm also allowing the people in HR to create their own apps. Um, that tenant apps is those power apps that you create yourself, those custom power apps. That's what that is, your organization apps. So then these people, I could just block all apps, um, but I'm allowing them to upload apps. So then I'll go back up in the breadcrumb trail here. And then I'll do IT app admins. So I'm going to put people in this policy. I still, I just want to block all the third party apps. I still don't want even this certain subset of people to be able to put uh, third party apps in here. So I can allow all Microsoft apps and allow all apps for tenant apps. So this means that all these people are able to upload all just any power apps that they create to be able to de to deploy deploy them to everyone. Okay, so then those are those are called permission policies and those just have to do with what apps and what types of apps that people are allowed to install when they go here. Okay? And it will if we block them, it will block them from this little app store for people. Okay? So then we have setup policies and that's slightly different. So uh, in, a, in a previous uh, power hour, I did a, a demo of um, the, front, the first line worker stuff with the staff, uh, not staff hub, but teams with the fr front line workers with clocking in and clocking out and all that. So I created this first line worker. But this is where you set up basically what you want this navigation over here on the left to be. And you can make that, create that to be different for different groups of people too. So um, like the global, the, the org wide default, and you've probably seen this, it's going to be activity, chat, teams, calendar, calling, and files. That's probably what most of you see there. And you all let me know in the chat if your organization has customized the way some of this looks. And that's one of the tricky things when I'm, we have a Teams training class in our site at IW Mentor. And that's one of the tricky things about recording training for that is because I'm, I'm saying, you know, these are all the things you'll see down the left side, but some people's organizations may have changed it. So it may even look completely different. So I went ahead and I created this organization browser app, a power app, and I uploaded it in here. And um, just like I showed you with how to upload it, you can also upload them right here. Um, I uploaded it here and I went ahead and added that to the global navigation so that everybody in the organization is going to see the organization browser down the left. Pretty cool, right? And then I've got, um, so that's my global policy. That's for everybody. And then I went ahead and created, so the first line worker policy is going to be, um, sh it's going to have shifts on it. So then, but because they like to, they need to be able to organize their shifts. And we did a whole power hour about shifts. That's what the word I was trying to think of a minute ago. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. And then I did another one. This also has upload custom apps as another setting in here. So um, I went ahead and created one called IT department. Maybe I want IT department to have a certain group of apps listed, but I want IT department to be able to upload custom apps. So this is where um, these people are going to be allowed to have that button. If they don't have 
Uh, if they're not in a policy that has upload custom apps, when they go to the list of all the apps, they're not going to see that upload an app button down here at all. Does that make sense? So that was just like another end user that I was testing with. So upload custom apps is what um, you turn on for, for those people. And then you can define what, you know, again, what apps you want them to see there. I did another one. So, um, yeah, so no, those are just the three app setup policies that I created. But I just wanted to show you how you can add, you know, your own Power App to that menu. So then let's go ahead and I'm going to change my resolution. It's probably going to mess up this recording when I do it, but because it looks so crammed together with that resolution that I always use when I'm doing Power Hour, but I wanted to show you more of what it's going to look like. So, so you can see over here on the left. Now you might want to name your Power App, give it a nice, short, succinct name because when it's showing down the left with all the other little icons here, it's gonna, you know, be cut off. Like mine's called IW Mentor Organization Browser. It's a really long name. So now when I click on the Power App, now there's my org browser and there I can just fully interact with that and use my Power App. What do you all think of that? Are you all, did you know that you could do this? Are you gonna try it? Let's see, are there any other questions, Joelle? Did you notice any questions? <laughs> oh, you used to have the button, um, Greg says, and they when they found out what it was, they removed it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's fun. Um, interesting. Yeah, so that's how you would be able to get straight to a Power App when you have it pinned uh, like that to the left side. And then let's see, I did create a couple of other different users and logged on as different users to kind of try a couple of different things. So this is, I'm in this, my Wonderlora tenant and I'm logged in as me. And um, what I didn't show you yet is, you know, I showed you that I had these groups uh, where I defined like IT only and HR, but how do you tell it who needs to be in those groups? We didn't do that yet. So the way you do this is painful and clunky, and I'm sure they're gonna improve it pretty soon. So um, you can manage, uh, basically you have um, one of those links that I sent you in Slack is a new, uh, basically a new thing coming out that's gonna give you, uh, or, or it just came out, the ability to do PowerShell in Teams to be able to automatically do some of these. So like, here's Billy Bob, I open up Billy Bob, I go to policies, it's multiple clicks for each individual person, it's ridiculous if you don't do it with PowerShell. I go to policies, then I have to, I can see what policies he's in, and I click edit, and this is where I can see that I added him, everybody was global, you know, org-wide by default, I added him to IT app admins and IT department. And I just did that manually and clicked OK. And then um, I have, say, like Dennis here and David. I can click at Edit Settings. And I can go to App Setup. I'm going to say I want them to be, or like, I want them to be in HR, the HR only policy, and click Apply. I did this earlier and it didn't work at all. So be warned that PowerShell, um, whatever the PowerShell commands are for this are probably going to work the best, but this one said that it was saved and to wait a few minutes for it to take effect, but it never took effect. I did this an hour or two ago. So then that's why I went in here individually and like went to Allie and just opened her up, went to policies, clicked edit, and then you could change her to have, like I changed her to have the HR only policy and click apply. So that's how you put the users in the policies. So that part is really clunky and painful. Um, but again, it's probably being improved pretty, pretty quickly. Um, let's see. So now I'll show you as, uh, 
as Billy Bob. So now I'm logged in as Billy Bob. And let me refresh. And also having to do with pushing these policies out, apparently it takes a while. Um, because that, and that's why yeah, I, I didn't like, want to try and apply these during power hour and then immediately try and see the results of them because it takes a while for those to go through because Billy Bob, I added him to this IT policy and I'm logged in as Billy Bob now and I still don't have that button to upload apps. So yeah, I, I saw do something. have, I can, you know, see the ones that got pushed out, but I don't have the button to upload any. Um, but that's where, and I also, he you knows he has the default um, little apps here. Let me change my resolution back. Okay. Oh, two to 24 hours. Wow. Yeah. So that would explain that. <laughs> I was like, well, I'll just do this, you know, like a couple of hours before power hour and surely it will show. <laughs> Maybe not. All right. Now what um, we're going to switch gears and go to this concept of teams inside of power apps. So now we're going, <laughs> so we can put our teams, our power apps inside of teams, but we can also put teams in power apps. So we can get like in this inception thing going and, um, so Power Apps and Teams and Teams and Power Apps, just like Power Apps, you can insert Power BI reports into Power Apps, but you could also insert a Power App into a Power BI report. So you just keep going and going. So now I'm going to switch gears and go to um, Power Apps. So in a Power App, I can create an interface to Teams. Now, I'm not sure, honestly, of the best business case of why you would want to recreate the Teams interface in a power app because it seems like it would just be a lot of work to recreate what you can already do in teams. So maybe you all can, you know, if you have ideas or as we do this, you can let me know what you think, but I went ahead and did it. I went ahead and created a power app that's got a teams connector and showing you the teams data in it. Okay. So I'll flip over to my desktop and I'll go to my power app and I just took my I just took my org chart, and this is actually something on our site, iwmentor.com, this org, org browser. I went ahead and just took this and made a copy of it and called it org plus teams. And I just added another screen to it. And so it's, you get the org browser where you can browse around and read about different people and search for people. But I just click, click go to my teams and go. <laughs> Let me go ahead and maybe run my own start. Here we go. Okay. So I've got my teams showing down the left side and I'm not doing any collecting or anything. So this is live data. So let me actually go close a few tabs here. Cause I think the more tabs I have where I have power apps and teams and things running, it's just going to slow things down. Okay, so those are my teams. And then let me see. That is struggling. Let me just look at it as, um, as an end user here. So I added a Teams connector. And go to my Teams. And it's going to get all my teams. So this is going to be my teams that I have access to that I'm in. And I just did this. So this particular thing, I just did it right before power hour started. So this is very ugly. And this is, you know, I literally, I literally just threw this together a few minutes ago. So, um, you know, it's not the most beautiful. So I click on a team. So these are my Microsoft teams. Like I can go to teams and I can see... See, these are my teams. So these are my teams. And I click on a team. 
this this little hover thing is being weird. I'm not sure what that's about. See how odd it's acting? It's like the little hover control is messed up. It doesn't I think it just doesn't like my screen resolution. <laughs> it's very wonky. You won't be able to read it, but you'll able, be able to get the concept of it better. Sorry, I didn't do this when I was trying it out because I wasn't trying it out on weird resolution. Okay, you can see the little dots going across. It's going to get on my teams again. It's not the fastest thing. And so I have my SharePoint Power Hour team. I have my field office team, my ASC core project team. And as I click on a team, it's showing me all the channels in the team. So this is field office 22. If I go look at the actual field office 22, you can see I've got these four channels. So these are my four channels. And then I can click on a channel and I can get all the messages in that channel. I think, let me try a different one. Again, this is all just demo data. It's kind of slow. All right. We go back into the design mode here. Um, okay, so let me just show you what the what what I did to get teams in here while I'm waiting for this to behave. All right. I've got um, in my da data sources, I went ahead and added a data source and I added Microsoft Teams. Um, let's see, I was looking at your chat. Quick chat to a person inside of a Power App. Oh yeah, that's true. If you want to just quickly, you're wor working and doing something in a Power App and you need to just quickly have a chat with some specific person just directly in there. Yeah, maybe if it's like tech support or something or yeah, like HR support, if you're in the HR app and you need to talk to an HR representative or yeah, that's a that's a great idea, I like that. Um, okay, so I added Microsoft Teams as a connector and then this is a gallery and what am I doing for the gallery items? So that is Microsoft Teams dot get all items, sorry, get all teams dot value. And I'm going to zoom in again and again so you can see these formulas. <laughs> sorry about that. YouTube's going to get very confused with my resolution. All right, so it's Microsoft Teams dot get all teams dot value. So everything, when you add the Microsoft Teams connector, you'll be able to um, have all these new little commands that you can do. So I'll just show you kind of what all the commands are real quick. Um, oh, Ant says you could use this Teams in a Power App as some sort of scrolling banner like a channel that has comments being added to it that would display in the Power App or Power BI report. Maybe. Um, yeah. I don't know how you get something to auto scroll though, but yeah, you could have a banner of chats and things. So you have create channel, get all teams, get all teams gets all the teams for me. It doesn't just give me every team that exists. Get all the channels for a certain group, which means a team. Get all the messages from a specific channel. Get it. So then the schedules and shifts, this has, has to do with um, shifts, that thing I was talking about a few minutes ago. So I can do get sh schedules, get shifts. I can get a specific team. Um, list shifts, get list time off reasons. So you can see there's posting message, posting replies, posting an adaptive card. So you can see there's a ton that I can do with the team's data just directly in here. So that's get all teams value. And then when I click on a team, I'm going to try it again. <laughs> it's spinning, spinning. Then I have the second gallery that has Microsoft Teams dot get channels for group. And this is erroring out because it's still like refreshing. It's being it's confused. Get channels for group. And you saw that it was working. 
And then in Get Channels for Group, I have to tell it which group. See Group ID? And the Group ID is going to be the thing that I selected over here in this gallery of my teams, Gal Teams. So then my third gallery is Get Messages from Channel. And then to get the messages from a channel, you have to tell it, look up here at the top, you have to tell it which group, which is the team. So the, don't get confused about that. They use the, the name group. They use the terminology group in here. That means team. That is equivalent to team. And so they use them interchangeably. So it's nice and confusing. Um, so I'm getting the group ID of whatever group I selected over here whatever team I selected, so galteams.selected.id, and then I need the channel, and then I'm getting galchannels.selected.id, and that's where it's um, giving me that specific channel. I'm going to try again. I think that one's just spinning. Maybe it'll take a minute. All right, so then there are a few other things. So I went ahead and created this button. So all I've done so far is just display information and just displaying teams, displaying channels and things like that. Um, but now I'm gonna show how you can actually make it, actually create a channel from directly in here. Oh, y'all are also getting buffering. Maybe it was because I switched my um, resolution back and forth. Uh, so they, Joelle, can they not see what I'm doing? I mean, I did, I forgot to share my screen with you. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing it. Oh, you are? And it's live for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like freezing a little bit, but it's still moving. Okay. I'll so leave the resolution the way it is. I won't mess with it anymore. Okay. So I got this, I just stuck this button on here. <laughs> then I'm going to say, I want people to be able to, whatever whatever team they're in over here on the left, I want them to be able to quickly create a channel directly from here. So I'll go ahead and just, I'm just gonna do this on the fly. I'm going to put a little text input box here. And I'm gonna have it actually not inside of the gallery. I'm gonna put it outside of the gallery. So when they click create channel, I want a text input box to pop up um, next to where they click create channel or maybe up here. I don't know. I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. Create new channel name. Oh, wait. I don't want that to be the default. I want that to be the hint text. There. All right, so when they click Create Channel, this box will appear, and then when they type something in the box, then they're going to be able to create it. So I'll put a little icon in here too, and have that be like a little next arrow, and I'll put it uh, right here in this little box. So this is the part of Power Hour where I just like make it up as I go. Okay, so there they'll click create channel and this thing will appear. So in order to do anything that involves any kind of pop-up or something appearing, I guess hey, it's a variable. It yeah. is Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just letting you know it is totally buffering now. Oh it is? Oh. Well I wonder what the recording's gonna be. Even your even your audio with me isn't great, like just on the Skype part. Oh, I wonder if I See, I think it has to do with this power app. Like, I think this power app is just like slowing everything down. Let me go ahead and just um, close all this stuff and close Chrome. Yeah, because like even with you, even with me, your audio is is real shaky. Yeah, it's taking a minute just to save my work here. I wonder what the, um, can you get some elevator music I can play?
Like, seriously, this has got to be the Teams connector that did that. All right. Now, Joel, so I'm still talking. Is it getting yeah. smoother now, now that, that I killed Chrome completely? Can we'll see in a second. Any Chrome process is running or anything. Because I don't think my CPU's going up or anything. Hopefully they got the most of the meat of what I was trying to show them. Yeah, it just started right when I was telling you. I mean, when it got real bad. Before, it was just kind of skipping okay. a little. I closed Chrome. Maybe I should close Slack. You can just tell me what's going on. But I can't close Skype because, yeah, I've literally got nothing running now. All right. XSplit Broadcaster is, like, it's a hog. Maybe I, maybe I can it. better it. now. What? Yeah, you, you, you sound better now. Sound oh, it's better now? Better. Okay. Maybe I yeah. confused it by, seriously, like I was kind of joking about changing my resolution and having it be messed yeah. up, but maybe I really did yeah, mess maybe. it up. Maybe. What? All right. So you think I should get started again? Looks like it. So people, can you, uh, are they saying that they can hear me okay now? Says I've got thirty four viewers. All right, I'll just get back to it. Yeah, you're coming in for me now. So okay, I'm hearing you and you. Okay, the I'm gonna open up two. um Power Apps again. I'll let you know if it buffers again. Okay, thanks. I'm gonna ration. We're gonna have to ration our internet too. Okay, back into my Power App. Like, as soon as it started trying to get that Teams data is when it started spinning and crunching and, like, getting all weird. <laughs> so you might want to do your Teams data in a collection. <laughs> just collect it. <laughs> um, okay. So I'll go to my Teams, just to the screen that I created. Um, I've got all my Teams, my channels, and then the text in the channel, which that's the part that's acting weird. And then I want to be able to click create channel and have this box pop up for them to actually create a channel directly from the Power App. So on select, I'm going to go ahead and set a variable. And then I'm going to use that variable and select both of these and set their visible property to the variable. This is just the, the typical way that you make things appear when you or, or pop up when you're clicking on something. And then I also will go ahead and click a button. See, it made it appear. And then I'll go ahead and make this button. So once they click this button, that's when it's actually going to create the channel and then make this box disappear again. So that's going to be my Microsoft Teams connector. Oops. Teams dot create channel. Now, what channel do I, what group slash team do I want to create the channel in? And that's going to be the one in my gal teams dot selected dot ID. That's the ID of that group. Am I still doing okay, Joelle? I'm not looking yeah, it looks at like Slack, it. so I can yeah, no, I'm, I Okay, and then what do I want the group to be called? So this is where it's the display name is going to be whatever they just typed right here in this box. So that's where it helps to give my text box a good name, txt new channel. So then I'll say I want this button. I go next to do a display name of the txt new channel dot whatever they typed in there. And what else does it give me that I can pick from? Oh, if I wanted to do a description, that would be optional. So I don't need to have a description. So I'll just close my parentheses. So that it's going to create the channel. And then it needs to close the pop-up or pop up or the appearance of that little box. So then it's going to do, I'm going to set that variable 
pop up to false. And then I also want to reset that, um, that little text box. New channel. Okay. So let's try that out. I've got my, let's select a different one. I've got, I'll oh, see if it's, I think, I feel like it's going to get, start getting all wonky when I start clicking on other things. See, look at, it's, yeah, it's it shaky. Did. Yeah, it just You know did. what seems like it's being weird is the pop-up, is the, um, the transition, the push thing. I'm yeah. gonna do transition none because the push seems like it's what it's like visually like the power app is shaking from that transition none yeah and I'm gonna do transition none on this other one too there oh see now when I click something it doesn't like <laughs> sit there and shake um all right. See, and now it works. I just took the transition out of there. Holy cow. Okay. So now I can see my, um, the actual text inside of one of these. All right. So what it's going to do is like field office number 22. I'm going to create a taxation channel and I type taxation is my new channel name and click the next button. And so I had the next button so that it's actually doing the create channel function, sending it directly to teams. And then, um, it closed itself. It closed the box. So I don't, let's see, I'll go see if I can refresh this. Let's see if teams has a refresh button. No, it doesn't have a refresh button. That's fine. So it created a channel. Let's go look over in teams. Now this is where I'm taunting my uh, bandwidth, I guess. There it is, taxation. So you see, there's taxation over in my, uh, in field office 22. So it just created the channel directly from the power app. So as you can see, the idea behind that is that, um, you are going to be able to do a lot of these different commands just in just teams commands like replying to chats and sending chats and and all these different things that i showed you in that drop down from within the power app there's one more thing i know we have about 10 minutes left but that is going to be the concept of and i'll just close this i'll save it the concept of passing teams channel information from the team itself like whatever team and channel that you're in at the time in in teams you can pass that as a parameter into the power app so that's one of those little links that i shared with you let me go ahead and share this power app so i would want to share this with everyone and then close it Okay, so let's go, let me go ahead and go back to Slack and get that link and uh, that I was showing you that shows you it's got a whole list of syntax um, information of how you can pass information about a channel directly when you're embedding the Power App in, the, in Teams, you can send it information about the channel. Does that make sense? So let's see, that link was in, gen in the general channel. I think that was... It's in the roadmap. Ah, no, it's not the roadmap one. It's that last get context for your team. So it's the link called get context for your teams tab. So I'll go ahead and share my desktop again. All right. See, so get context for your Microsoft teams tab. So this is a whole list of parameters that I can pass when I'm going to, when I'm in teams of parameters about that, uh, about that, that channel. So I haven't done this yet though. So this is the part where this is, seems way more complex. And I thought it's kind of out of the realm of 
kind of simple stuff that I usually cover in power hour. I feel like we could really get into the weeds about with this, but it gives you the ability to pass information about the child. The, the thing is you'd have to go to teams and you'd go ahead and put your power app in a specific channel. But then the Power App would, if you are using some of this context, then the Power App would just know information like the channel name. And then it would be able to present you if you have something dynamic you want to show, depending on what the channel is, or maybe the people in that team, then it could show you more information. So this is more of like a brainstorming thing um, of, I'm not sure yet off the top of my head what I'm going to do with this kind of data in a power app, but that is how you would pass the parameter of the context. Now I was thinking of trying this with the power app that I just showed you that I have the team's data in it. So pass the information about what team I'm in to the power app so that that little console just shows specific information about that team. But um, I don't think I can do that in 10 minutes because that is going to, so we learned about in that, well, in my, in my advanced Power Apps class, we learned about how to pass a query string parameter into a Power App, and that alone is like an hour-long lesson. Um, but what you would do is you'd have to um, use that parameter function in the Power App, I believe, they don't really explain it in here, and use these parameters um, inside of your Power App. So, I don't know, that, that seems... That's again, like I mentioned, it's a little more out of the realm of what the kind of things I'd cover in Power Hour, but that is going to be, um, that's really new that just came out or it's just rolling out. All right, so what's the setting you're using in your gallery that give the fisheye look on hover? That's so Greg, I guess I just kind of tackled that. That was that little transition. That was the push and pop or the transition. So that's what I think was co causing the problem. Um, uh, so what else did I miss, Joelle? <laughs> yeah, people want to create channels left and right. Yeah. Any other? Oh, create, Joelle said if you had a project management app and needed to create channels for each new project or something like that. Oh, yeah, Joelle, that's a great idea. So we even have in our Power Automate class that we teach, we have a whole sort of uh, flow that you create where somebody fills in a new project request. And so all those different ac actions that I showed you that are available within a Power App to having to do with Teams, all those are things that you can do within Power Automate too. And those are much more easy to read. It's not as cryptic as what you're looking at with trying to write a function out in Power Apps. So you could do something like um, if you're in a Power App filling out some kind of form having to do with a new project, you could just have it be part of the Power App where it creates the new channel. But you could also have, um, you know, have it be part of some other process that's a, that's a flow that would create the channel um, that way too. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I... Uh, Again, it's been weird times. We kind of talked about this at at the beginning of the show. Just we were kind of chatting about what all everybody's doing. But um, we're we're having Power Hour again next week. Uh, all the conferences that I had planned that I was going to upcoming are now off the calendar. So um, we're we were going to be skipping some Power Hours because of that, but. Um, we're here and I'll just, I'll just teach my children power apps and have them come do power hour for me. You gotta, I'm going to teach them all the family business. <laughs> I think Claire should definitely do power hour. I think she